go look at um, an example of the IPAC nomenclature. Uh, so the question is concerning figure 5, uh, how the compound is named. So this is what we have in figure 5, and the name we have is 2-methyl-1,3-butendiene. And uh, the common name is isoprene. And uh, usually when we want to name compounds, there are some rules. Uh, and one of those rules is uh, we can look at the suffix functional group. That's the functional group that de define the compound. Sometimes if uh, you, you really don't, not very familiar with the chemistry or the, co the compound, of course, you will not know what functional group uh, defines the compound. And a number of compounds could have multiple functional groups. Uh, but this, we can look at it two ways. We have an akin functional group here because of the double bonds. Uh, bond. So we can look at the structure and we could define our parent chain or the main chain which forms the backbone of the structure using this uh, length, this chain length here, because we have two alkanes um, bonds in this chain length. And sometimes when you don't have these double bonds that make it obvious for you to determine what the parent chain should be, you could look at the path that has the longest chain. So this could be a path one part going this way and this will have three carbon to be a three carbon chain and this will be another part which is a four carbon chain and so when you're looking at chain lengths the the one with the longest chain will be the main chain or the parent chain which is from the backbone of that structure so those numbers in red i just put them then to name the carbon so how do you decide how to name the carbon? You can name it from the right or you can name it from the left. And uh, there are a number of rules that guide. So you name it into both directions, but then you can look at the location of the functional group, the suffix functional group. So when we say the suffix functional group, that will be the functional group that is attached or part of the main chain or the parent chain. So we see here that we see the, sorry, we see that cane functional group being part of this main chain. Okay, it could be at the end, it could be incorporated. So that the arcanes form the suffix functional group. So one way you could name is that if there was only one, suppose. We don't have this alkene functional group here, and there was just one double bond in the structure. Then we're going to start naming from the right because that is closer to our suffix functional group. That gives us the lowest carbon number when we so we'd have one, two, three, four, and then we'll find out that the number one, the lowest carbon that we use in naming. The positional carbon would be the lowest from the right but in this case if we name from the right or from the left it will be the same would have one and then would have four we have one and we have three carbons you know that define our surface functional group and if we name from the right we still have one and we still have three carbon defining so it, it doesn't really matter in this case. So one other way we could look at is the what we call the side chains, the branches, or the substituent, substituent compounds. Okay, the compounds that replace hydrogen. And sometimes it could be other functional groups. So we'll call them the secondary functional groups. So you could call them the substituent. Uh, groups, you could call them the side chains, you could call them the secondary functional group if they are functional groups. So in this case, if we numbered one, two, three, four, this uh, side chain 
our substituent is going to be on the second carbon. And if we number it from the right, one, two, three, four, it's going to be on the third carbon. So in that case, we'd prefer the rules is would go from the left, number from the left to the right. So I'll just go ahead and explain the name. To methyl, one, two, butadiene. So this number, the two, is called the positional number. It tells us the location of the side chain or the side chains that may be attached to the parent chain. Uh, so you could have more than one number in front, more than one positional number. You could have two, 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 three, two, whatever. But they tell us the location of the constituent compounds, okay, or the secondary functional groups. And in this case, like I said, we have a methyl. So the name following that positional number will be the name of that substituent. And in this case, it's a methyl. So we have a methyl attached to the second carbon. So that's the two, and this is the methyl. Okay. And then we have another uh, locational number or positional number. Okay, and uh, would we'll move forward and then go back in this explanation. This is an infixed number. It's a positional number, but it's an infixed number. And uh, it tells us the location of the suffix functional group. Or in this case, this double bond, okay? Um, and the suffix functional group is attached to a main chain, okay? And this main chain has four carbon. And so we have buta, okay, um, indicating four. So if you look at your lecture notes, you see that we have the alkane. When you look at the alkanes, um, they give us the idea of what one carbon structure is named, what two carbon structures is named, uh, methyl, ethyl, three carbon propyl, um, four carbon butane. But so this alkane, Okay, the, the usually we are the the, uh, the main parent chain is named after the alkane group. Okay, so in this case we have four carbons, so it's buta. As if there was just one um, double bond, it's going usually it's but one n. Okay, but when it's more than one double bond or more than one multiple bond. The A is added, buta, okay? So, but, but one for one, just when there's just one multiple bond or one double bond, and then buta when there's more than one. So, in this case, we're using buta and then dying, okay? So, we have di for two, and then the N is the suffix for the alkene group, which is the suffix functional group and I said the suffix functional group is the group is the functional group that's part of the parent okay the parent chain so we have two double bonds okay and this locational or the infix number is telling us that these bonds are at the location one and the location three Okay, so we use the first carbon. So this double bond is between one and two, but we us usually use the f the first carbon to which is attached as between three and four. So the first carbon to which is attached is three. So basically, this is how we understand this naming. So in general, what we're saying is that would have not in every compound, but would usually have a prefix. Okay. Uh, would have the backbone or the main chain and we have a suffix so the prefix you know would tell us about the secondary functional group or the substituent groups attached to the main chain or the parent or the backbone of the structure and usually we do that in alphabetical order so if there's an ethyl attached to the main chain there's a methyl attached the ethyl will come before the methyl, okay? 
and then we have the main functional group which is the suffix functional group okay which would come after the parent chain has been named okay and we have locational numbers which tell us the position now some people name the structure like the, the actual IUPAC name IUPAC name is this but sometimes it's some people write the name like this and this seems a little more logical because then you have your main chain which is the buta four carbon chain you have your prefix which is a two metal locational uh, number telling you that there's a metal on the second carbon and uh, you have your suffix so here the infix number is directly attached to the suffix so it's more reasonable i mean people connect with this a little better because then you have your one three diane so it's it's directly attached to that functional group so you can really easily connect this number to the functional group okay so i just brought this up to kind of help those who would connect with this prefix main chain suffix logic you know in a better way um, just before I end I would just want to say that there are many parts in defining the chain length we could have many parts to take for instance if you have a structure like this this could be one part in counting the chain length or trying to find what the parent chain is this could be one part to take so in this case where you have all single bones uh, the part that has the longest uh, carbons or the longest the most single bond will be the parent chain okay we we'll form the backbone and then we'll see the branch so if we look here we have one two three four these are all the parts this could take we have a uh, oh, sorry so we have this and we have this other two one two three four if we take the green part okay so there's also four if we take the orange part we have one two three four but if we take the red part we have one two three four five so this red part forms the backbone of the structure so that would be the parent chain okay and um, so if we're naming this we could start one two three four five one two three so either way if we named from the right or from the left it's still going to be the same okay so the structure is going to be three three dimetal so we have two metal group and then it's five carbon so what's that going to be it's going to be propane because the uh, the parent chain the functional group here is just an alkene functional group it doesn't have any double bond so this is just a very simple example to clarify but suppose we have a double bond let's see on this part suppose there was a double bond on this part okay this will form a backbone this part will now form a backbone even though it had less carbon so uh, I hope this explanation helps and um, if you have any further question you can let me know enjoy your day bye bye